Good evening, YouTube or BookTube. This is Johnny. I thought I'd make a video. It's been four or five days. I'm down the lower level because upstairs it's about 83 degrees. And down here in the lower level it's 71 degrees. According to my clock, it is uh, May the 4th. 2021 it is a Friday this is a Friday reads it's 8 22 at night here upstairs I can hear my wife and our little granddaughter Josie she's having a sleepover so Papa sleeps down on the lower level tonight so I'm down here writing in my diary my June did I say I said May didn't I it is not May the 4th, it is June the 4th, 2021. I said May, didn't I? I have to get my month straight here. So I'm in the month of June, and I'm on page this evening, 616. So writing in my diary, looking at, uh, well, as far as what I've been reading the last couple of days, the, uh, what was it? My wife was at some thrift store. I think it was my wife. I can't remember exactly, but it was last week. She was at thrift. We were at some thrift store where she was, and she called me on my cell phone, and she said, "Do, do I have this book? I think I've shown this book in recent videos, Americans in Paris." A literary anthology by Adam Gok Got Got was it Gopic Gopic and when I when I got this book there was a receipt in this book from Strand's bookstore in New York City <clears throat> and it mentioned this book. And then I noticed on the receipt there was another book mentioned that I never heard of. And it was called, and I got it in the mail the other day, Mrs. Adams in Winter, uh, A Journey in the Last Days of Napoleon by Michael O'Brien. And this is about uh, John Quincy Adams' wife, Louisa Catherine Adams, and who uh, John Quincy Adams was the son of John Adams, one of our uh, early presidents. I think maybe he was the fifth president. Uh, I don't remember. I know. I can't remember right now. I think he was beat by Thomas Jefferson. I don't remember chronological order. You have to forgive me. Uh, so. Um, so John Quincy Adams was in Paris to negotiate the peace of the 1812 war. And before he was in Paris, he was like a, you might call him an ambassador to the Tsar of Russia there in um, St. Petersburg. And uh, he had to go to Paris and he left Louisa Catherine Adams and the little boy there in St. Petersburg and then she got a letter from John Quincy Adams telling her to leave St. Petersburg and travel to Paris to meet up with him. So and that's what this uh, historical narrative biography it's uh, about her journey 
through the last days of Napoleon, the, no, the Neoponic Wars. So I've been reading this pretty steady. I've read 135 pages. I've been reading that last couple of days. I haven't, I have, um, uh, tinnitus or something in my, in my head where I have ringing and buzzing all the time. I have to see my, an ear specialist on June the 15th. So I have constant ringing in my ear. Uh, you know, you know this noise. And it's been very irritating. So I've been trying to read this as a distraction and taking uh, some anxiety pills, some uh, Xanax, Xanax. So I've been reading this pretty steadily the last couple of days. I have been reading. Uh, selections from this. So, and my wife uh, today, going back about my wife, to, today she went to visit her sister-in-law, who's a widow. My wife's older brother died a couple of years ago, and my wife went to visit his widow. They're very close friends, and she stopped at a thrift store, my wife, on the way home called Ditto's, which raises money for Christian schools. And she called me on her cell phone and she asked me if I had these books. <laughs> so she calls me and I go to the computer and I have my books cataloged and library thing. And she'll, she'll, she'll say, do you have this book by this certain author? And then I'll go in my library thing and I'll search to see if I have it. And if I have it, I tell her, don't buy it. But if it's a good hardback, perfect condition, you know, these books go for a dollar, for two dollars. You can't go wrong. So the, I just want to show you, I, I was going to show you the books I got at the Blue Stockings uh, bag sale last week. And I also went to local thrift stores recently and got a bunch of books. But then I realized this evening that would be a super long video. And I don't like making long videos. I don't want to bore you. So I'm just going to show you the books that my wife found for me at Ditto's today. And she said, do you have this book? <laughs> it's called The Selected Letters of Ralph Waldo Emerson, edited by Joel Meyerson. And I didn't have this. I have other books by Joel um, Joel Meyerson. He's an authority on the trans American Transcendentalism. I have all I have several books by him. <clears throat> I was going to show those to you, but then, like I said, the video would be a long time. But I didn't have this one. As you all know, I'm a student of American Transcendentalism, Ralph Waldo Emerson, uh, Thoreau, Emily Dickinson, Nathaniel Hawthorne, Herman Melville, Margaret Fuller, the Alcotts <clears throat> and others of that time period. So she picked this up for me and I've been looking at this this evening. And then she found this book, Noel, Noel, Noah Webster, the autobiographies of Noel, Noel Webster from the letters and essays and memoir and diary edited with an introduction by Richard M. Rowling. As you know, I'm a, I am like 19th century biographies. Before the book nook closed uh, back in 2020, uh, Noel's uh, dictionary came into the book nook and I wanted to buy it. But I don't know, somehow it disappeared and I never got around to buying it. That's what he's famous for, Webster's Dictionary, <laughs> if you don't know who he is. And so she picked this up for me. Uh, I. I like American autobiography, uh, early 19th century, 18th century, 17th century American memoirs, letters, autobiographies. So she picked that up for me. And then she asked if I had this book. I have this book, The Jamesons, The Family Narrative by R.W.B. Lewis. 
But this is in perfect condition. This is the fascinating account of a remarkable American family. The Jamesons traces the origin, development, and flowering of perhaps the most astounding, outstanding intellectual family American family has ever produced. The most famous members, William James, I just showed you. Uh, I just picked up a used William James biography. Foremost psychologist and pro progressive thinker of his time, Henry James. You know I collect everything I can on Henry James, the writer, great novelist, a man of letters, and the brilliant sister, Alice James, political radical and lifelong invalid. I have her biography over there in my uh, William James collection. Were devoted siblings who suffered from an inedible and sometimes unconscious sense of rivalry. So then it goes into the the Jamesons. She got this for two dollars. It doesn't even look red. Perfect condition. I said pick it up. And then she found this biography on Frederick Douglass by William S. McFeely. I don't have any biographies on Fred Frederick Douglass, but I have other biographies by William S. McFreely. I have his Pulitzer winning biography on Ulysses S. Grant by William S. McFreely. This is a very famous biography on Grant. And then I have this biography by William S. McFeely, Portrait, The Life of Thomas Eakins. He was a very famous portrait painter. He's famous for his uh, painting of Walt Whitman and other uh, 19th century Americans. Uh, he's a very famous uh, painter. And I've had this for a while. It came into the book nook. I got it at the book nook. As you all know, the book nook is opening on June the 14th. I'm scheduled to back to my old shifts Monday 10 to 1 and Friday 10 to 1. Carol's picking up a shift on Fridays from 1 to 3. And plus, she'll be with me in my own shifts. So I. So McFreely wrote this portrait of the life, portrait the life of Thomas Eakins. Uh, Thomas Eakins, a native of Philadelphia, painted two worlds, one sure of its values, the surgeons, inventors, musicians, and ethics of his time. Another reflected his struggles with depression and sexual identity. So he wrote, so he's a very famous early American painter. So I had this by McFreely. And then she picked up this book, The Civil War, The Civil War World of Herman Melville by Stanton Gardner. Uh, it's I have a hard time finding biographies on Herman Melville. I do have his his novels. Of course he's famous for Moby Dick and his short stories of the South Seas and uh but this is in perfect condition. It doesn't even look red. So she picked that up. It was only a dollar. <laughs> so this is the Civil War World of Herman Melville by Stanton Gardner. So I was kind of excited to get this. Uh, I want to read more about Herman Melville. As you know, I have a huge Moby Dick collection. And then she picked up this book at Ditto's, along with the ones I just showed you. New York collection from the Harper's Magazine from the, uh, the early 19th century of Harper's. It's all articles uh, from the Harper's Magazine on New York. I was looking at the one today called Literary New York about early the, the early literary scene in New York, about the Bohemians, which uh, I've shown you before. This book on early 
uh, Garrett's Pretenders and the History of Bohemianism in America by Albert Peary. I showed you this book in the past. So, so I was pleased, you know, I collect books on New York City. I've shown, I have a, I'm always collecting books on New York City. N New York City from New York, major city of the world. So she got me that. So that's the kind of books that she got me today at Ditto's. I wasn't going back to Ditto's, but I was feeling, like I said, my ear. I don't feel well, but I might go back in the morning. Carol says she looked, got all the books she saw in history, but sometimes my wife doesn't see everything. We all have different eyes and how we see things. And so I just have to also quench my own curiosity. <laughs> Maybe she didn't see something that I would see that she wouldn't see. But I've been looking at this tonight down here in the lower level, reading the introduction to the Selected Letters of Ralph Waldo Emerson, edited by uh, Joel Meyerson. And I've been reading uh, Mrs. Adams in Winter, A Journey, Last Days of Napoleon by Michael O'Brien. Really enjoying this. It's so it's also about European history uh, as she travels through Prussia and goes into Germany and parts of Russia and he goes into that time period what took place historically in the past. The wars between countries like Sweden with Russia and Russia with French with Napoleon and the Tsars and Napoleon and all those kinds of things. So it's very fascinating if you're into uh, 18th and 19th century European history, Russia and Russian history. If you're into... Uh, one of the reasons why I bought this book is I have a huge Adams, John Adams and Abigail Adams collection. I have John Quincy Adams collection. And I don't have many books on Louisa Catherine Adams, and so I wanted this for my my Adams collection. <laughs> of course, you all know I'm into Henry Adams, who is traces his his family history back to John Adams, Henry Adams. I just showed you that book. This book here, I showed you this, The Last American Aristocrat. The Brilliant Life and Prob Improbable Education of Henry Adams by David S. Brown. Uh, yeah, it says here, um, so yeah, he, his great, great grandfather was John Adams and, uh, his great-grandmother was Louisa Catherine Adams, something like that. So, anyway. So, I hope you're having a good week. This is a Friday. I hope you have a good weekend of reading. Uh, like I said, I've been writing in my diary, taking pictures of flowers. Everything is in blooming right now. My wildflowers are blooming. The roses are blooming. The peonies are blooming it's going to be in the 80s and 90s the rest of this week and uh, so yeah I'm just praying for healing that the Lord restore my hearing uh, keep me from freaking out you know I suffer from anxiety and panics and depression and lack of assurance and dread and fear and all those things, uh, especially when I hear about what's going on in American politics and environmental and the environment, droughts and wars and pestilence and I just have to believe that Jesus is coming soon and that he's reigning over the heavens and the earth. So once again, thank you for your comments. Thank you for your support. To pray once again that you are healthy, that you're vaccinated. If you're not, get vaccinated. And yeah, so I hope you have a good reading weekend. 
I don't know when I'll get to these used books from last week, but I'm sure in time I'll get around to it. I'm still waiting for the bookcases. I thought I would hear it this week. I don't know, maybe tomorrow the bookcases might come. I'm already, I'll do some more dehauling once the bookcases come. I'm finding all kinds of doubles. I've been taking doubles out of the library last couple of days. I'm always finding doubles and putting them in the van to take to the Blue Stockings bookstore for in-store credit. So once again, I'll sign off. And until next time, bye. And once again, thank you for all your comments. Thank you for the new subscribers. And until next time, bye.